Casey O'Kanan here from Fiction Atlas Press, bringing you another indie connection. Today I'm going to be telling you about some indie books that you might enjoy if you're a fan of Christina Henry's Lost Boy. The first book I have for you is called Hook, Dead to Rights by Melissa Snark. Neverland is a wondrous isle of adventure. Neverland is a cruel lie. Children follow Peter Pan, believing their dreams will come true, to never grow up. Surprise, surprise, they never will. The children Peter Pan abducts are murdered or meet a grimmer fate. I'm the child who escaped Peter's treachery. I've made it my life's calling to rescue the lost boys, even those who don't wish to be saved. Now Pan has a schooner he's using to steal even more children. I'm the only one who can stop him. Call me Hook. I am the master and commander of a pirate ship, and I'll have my revenge on Peter Pan if it's the last thing I do. The second book I have for you is called Rise of the Sea Witch by Stacey Rourke. Details of the Sea Witch's banishment have been exaggerated. The body count that preempted it was not. Once an illustrious princess, her hands and tentacles were stained with the blood of thousands. No one could comprehend how the hooks of madness dragged her down from her life of privilege. Born Princess Vanessa of Atlantica, the ambitious young royal was one of two children born to the great king Poseidon. She and her brother Triton were groomed from birth to rule. Yet only one would ascend the coveted throne. While carefree Triton flits through his training with a cavalier demeanor and beguiling charm, Vanessa's hunger for her father's acceptance drives her to push herself to the limits of magic and combat to become a leader worthy of her people. When war against the humans ravages their once regal kingdom, political sides are chosen. Factions from the Seven Seas challenge the existing leadership, pitting Vanessa against her brother in a vicious battle for the crown. Traitors are exposed, dark family secrets revealed, and a once strong sibling bond is strained to its breaking point. Only when the ink-black waters from the ultimate betrayal rescind will the truth be known of how the villainous sea witch rose with one name on her vengeful lips, Triton. The third book I have for you is called Snow Spelled by Stephanie Burgess. Four months ago, Cassandra Harwood was the first woman magician in England, and she was betrothed to the brilliant, intense love of her life. Now Cassandra is trapped in a snowbound house party deep in the elven dales, surrounded by bickering gentlemen magicians, manipulative lady politicians, her own interfering family members, and, worst of all, her infuriatingly stubborn ex-fiancé, who refuses to understand that she's given him up for his own good. But the greatest danger of all lies outside the manor in the falling snow, where a powerful and malevolent elf lord lurks and Cassandra lost all of her own magic four months ago. To save herself, Cassandra will have to discover exactly what inner powers she still possesses, and risk everything to win a new kind of happiness. And the last book I have for you is called The Witch's Tower by Tamara Grantham. Gothel is a witch. Punished for the actions of her mother, her choice is simple. Either she stands guard over Princess Rapunzel, or she dies. But just because a choice is easy doesn't mean it's pleasant. Protecting Rapunzel means watching as the princess lays trapped in a tower, bedridden by hair that is so long and heavy it's slowly driving her insane. Gothel's life has become one of imprisonment and solitude as well, until a prince and his handsome squire appear at the tower. Only one object can cut Rapunzel's hair and end the curse, a pair of magical shears. But the shears are guarded by the most terrifying witches in the land, who also happened to be Gothel's aunts. As Gothel and the Princess Squire, Raj Talmond, work to form a plan, she finds herself more and more drawn to the mysterious young man from the Outer Lands. Unfortunately, his destiny is far more dangerous than she wants to admit. To save a princess, he must kill the witch who's been forced to guard her. Okay, that's all for me this week. I'll see you next week on the Indie Connection. Bye.